YouTubers, Mike Martin's here. Mike Martin's channel. Nice crispy last. What is it? Last Tuesday of uh, February 2017. I'm moving to my new house tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited! I'm gonna do some painting, some basic renovations, clean up and organize the place, get it ready for the family. Slow move, slow move, slow move. Got this. This place rented for the month, so slow move, slow move. No rush. No need to rush myself. The worst thing is rushing. I would like to thank. Um, University of Illinois fight, fighting Alani for sending me this hat, beautiful hat. Came in, came in the mail for me today from the University of Illinois. That a uh, couple of people down there that I watched my show, uh, watched my Portuguese channel actually that sent me this. Anyways, thanks for why, uh, thanks for the hat, and let's continue here. I got this really good one. It's called Top Ten Reason Canada Canada Needs a National Housing Plan. It's a really good one. A housing plan. Hey, that's an idea. Let's get a car for our alarm after our car gets stolen. Let's get a home alarm after someone breaks in and steals $200,000 worth of merchandise and stuff. Yeah, get the alarm after the house gets broken into. That's fantastic. That's kind of what's happening in the housing market. In the midst of the world's seamlessly catastrophic political turn of late, you may have missed the growing activity about national housing strategy. About 30 years ago, the federal government walked away from the from the business of making sure Canadians were housed. Well, that's a good idea. And we are alone among the G20 countries in not having a national strategy. Go figure. Given the tenor of hate and division that surrounds us, here's an in, in invitation to focus on something positive and something achievable, something that will bring benefit communities across the country and build better health outcomes for all Canadians. So here's a top 10 list why you should help make national housing a strategy reality. So I keep telling you guys, get out there, get your cameras, talk, voice, there's nothing wrong. This is the biggest topic, and I've said this, and I'm gonna keep saying this, in every single English-speaking country in the world, Australia, New Zealand, England, London, Ireland, uh, I mean, sorry, England, Ireland, um, Wales, uh, the United, minus the United States, uh, Canada, like all the English speaking countries are facing this problem because of free market. Watch my free market video below so you get an idea what I mean. Uh, free market's killing us. Anyways, top 10. Number one, you believe in dignity, not just for yourself, but for your neighbors as well. More than ever, it's important to speak up about things that matter the most and that change that you want to see in the world. Number two, people across the country are supporting the National Housing Collaborative. The goal is simple. All Canadians have access to housing that meets their needs and that they could afford. Are you in? Number, number three, 235,000 Canadians will experience homelessness sometime this year. Of those, 64,500 will be women fleeing violence who will end up in shelters. Imagine how hard it is to, to leave your home in order to save your life and know where to go. Homelessness should not be the consequence of life without violence. That's a really good one. Uh, number four, 20% of Canada's homeless population is made up of young people it is it's really young people and that's why i'm leaving the city i'm leaving the city because i'm moving to a small town because i don't want my kids sucked into that trap you know thousands of them on the uh, on the streets every night apart from being an epic long-term planning fail what does it say about us that we have made so many of our young people disposable the problem is there's no jobs for anybody right the problem is we get mass immigration coming in. Everybody wants to work. Well, not everybody. A percentage wants to work. And when they do want to work, they want to work office jobs, office jobs, government jobs, bank jobs, clerical jobs, uh, like postal jobs. They don't want to do the other jobs. So the people with actual degrees and like I met like a homeless guy the other day that has a college degree and uh, uh, he's a chemical engineer and he's been homeless for like four years. Number five, want a practical way of being part of the truth, reconciliation. Indigenous people make up 4% of the overall population from coast to coast to coast. But in, it said that three times. But in, in some cities, as much as 50 to 90% of homeless people 
a homelessness epidemic. In Toronto, Indigenous people make up 15% of the city's homeless, but only 0.5% of the total population. How about to reconcile ourselves to changing that right away? Number six, a national housing benefit being proposed. It would be an immediate support to re-enter households in need at risk. It would help 800,000 households close to the affordability gap, keeping them keeping them in their homes, off the street, and and out of the shelters. It would mean choice and autonomy, dignity when people need it the most. A critical, enormous step towards poverty reduction. Number seven, income inequality. It is harder and harder for increasing number of Canadians to keep up. Finance Minister Bill Monroe says that pressurious work, short-term employment, and lots of career changes are here to stay. That just can the best we uh, that just can't be the best we can do. Sorry about that. But in the meantime, let's make a national housing strategy the first line of defense in the face of income equality. Number eight, knowing resources are limited, we should make the best investments possible. Yet we spend seven billion on homelessness in shelters chronic health disasters and other related costs, the return on the investment is kind of a bottomless pit, a less of a hope and in inability to flourish. Bad positioning economically, the list goes on. If you wanna if you want to get if you if you get what you pay for, why are you paying for homelessness instead of investing in housing for people? Yeah, imagine all these problems that they're having and stuff that surround the homelessness situation. Imagine they just built houses every time something happened they just built more houses <sighs> let's be creative the federal government number nine let's be creative the federal government is being asked to consider how to increase the maintain diverse affordability rental housing through the innovative capital tools long-term financing equity funds and new rental projects it's time to leverage government investment and do critical housing work in creative and innovative ways number ten these are scary times, engaging in good antidote. Get in touch with your MP or track them down at local event and tell them how important the national housing strategy is for everyone in your country. You'll feel good as all those who have taken to the streets at the last few weeks. You don't even have to wear pink hat, though, of course, you can wear what you want. As long as you speak up firmly, clearly, and build a way, and build a way forward. So, basically, let's pick a voice. Make it clear, unless, you know, housing, sh this should not be a problem. Housing, I mean, healthcare isn't a problem. Why is housing a problem, right? It's not, this is a disaster. I just really hope that we could fig figure something out, and that's a really good top 10 list from what I'm seeing, and it's tough. It's tough, you know, sometimes when I'm going down to the shop and I see a lot of homeless people, it's really tough. It hurts, you know, seeing that sometimes, and uh, very young people. Young, I'm talking about like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, just there. Like 25 now, the age of 25 now, in 2017, is considered more, still a youngster in 2017. 25 is still considered a youngster. When I was a kid, in the, like in the early 80s, 25 years old was a grown man married with kids in a house. Now things have changed so much, right? 25 now, is still considered underage. Not technically, not on paper, but in a way you're still considered young at 25 nowadays. So anyways, I wanted to put this out there. Let me know what you guys think. Um, yeah, things are, things are getting really bad. And now with the increase and influx of immigration coming into Canada, uh, starting tomorrow, February 1st, it, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what, um, I think I think what what's happening is because they're trying to get student visas out there and for people to come and study in Canada. So when they get them to study in Canada, that fills up tuition. So the federal government or the schools make money. You know what I'm saying? And then they build off that and then hopefully they get credit cards here and build up they get enslaved here somehow and then they end up staying, right? If they if they want to, right? I don't know, man. I don't know where things are headed. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, guys. And um, Illinois, uh, Ilani, Fighting Ilani, 
thanks for the hats. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, I'll be wearing it for the next few days. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.